Hello everyone, welcome back to Quantum Break with me, Transfat. Okay, here we are at the Bradbury swimming pool. But, uh, I'm gonna be a jerk and look around here. Let's see if there's anything to see. Ah! There's no way in over here. Can I, can I get that from here? Well, I guess we're gonna be up there at some point. Good to know, I guess, maybe? Hi. I am the opener of doors. So Will he doesn't fit. owns this whole place, does he? Okay. I'm gonna find another way in. Make it quick. I'll keep a lookout for unwanted company. <laughs> Advertisement. Yeah, Beth, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure that uniform really works with you just uh i don't know just not feeling it taxi okay a nissan zero mission taxi this is weird huh i could swear this is the same cab i was in when i came to the university it's a taxi they all look the same don't they i'll check the license plate on my phone and see if anything comes up but i mean it's a long shot Okay, I like how there's a Nissan logo, and there's a Nissan right there, and there's a Nissan board over there we just seen, and, okay, I thought maybe there was some more there. Yeah, okay. Oh, what we got here? Oh, okay. Oh, that's neat. I'm digging that. That's probably the coolest one of one of those things that we've seen. Can I make that jump? Oh wait, that wasn't just for fluff. I was that's part of the puzzle, I guess. Wait. Why would I wanna get why would I wanna activate that then? What does that allow me to do that I can't do now? Oh, get up. Right. Ah. Actually. This probably leads to the uh, the thing that we spotted earlier. So let's go over here. Be a ninja. Oh. That's where we're supposed to go. I just looked up the license plate of the cab parked over there. It belongs to somebody named Nick Marsters. Well if that's where we're supposed to go. Nick Marsters? Hey, I think I found a way in. It's not possible. I've been monitoring monarch activity this whole time. Okay. Glad I came over this way. One of five. I think I got three of seven in the last level. Not so not so good at that. Yes, Fun. Jack. Oh, quit whining. Oh, it just occurred to me what that graffiti actually was of so the camp measure. That's interesting. From Jack. I guess. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe it's not graffiti. Maybe it's stuff left behind. Jesus. They have no idea what happened. Well, this this game uh, definitely had to, pa to uh, passes to the uh, what do they call it the Bechdel test. Maybe Serene thought you look like somebody people Maybe. could trust. Maybe have they been talking about something other than <laughs> um a man? Maybe you just wanted to see you break. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's part of it. The beach ball up here and some uh. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, we're we're in a swimming pool. Right, right, right. I I, I got gotcha. you. I can remember things. Just I don't know why they would throw that up in the attic. Neat. You know. Damn it. 
These stutters aren't going away. But stutters are good for us. Why would you care? Also, that scene would have been a lot more powerful if the birds had pooped. What a froze. <laughs> oh, great. Why are you there? Okay. Well, let's follow the birds, I guess. Whee! That was strange. Like, Steam is telling me I get 60 frames per second, but it doesn't look like it. I wonder if this, the stream frames per second thing is delayed and averaged out or something. Okay. A lot of readables, looks like. Will had used the building to hide away his personal items. Okay. What the hell were you doing here, brother? Time travel experiments with rats? <laughs> Schrodinger, first car or not. That, that's, that's cute. Schrodinger and quantum physics. That's great. Okay, May 17th, 1998. This is William Joyce, and I'm about to conduct the first animal test of the machine prototype using my trusty pet mouse, Schrodinger, in order... Where? He's gone. Where'd he go? Shit. Come on, Schrodinger. Come to Willie. Come on, come on, come on. You're okay. You're all right. You're all right. Okay, finally, we're sending Schrodinger into the machine clockwise through the corridor, which will send him five minutes into the future, meaning he will reemerge exactly five minutes after he enters the machine. It has now been three minutes. No sign of Schrodinger. This is a very good sign. Two minutes to go. Okay, so, yeah, turns out he just kind of sat inside the corridor for five minutes, took a shit on the tubing. This reveals a very clear flaw in my test. My mouse is an idiot. There's a rat. Okay, the machine is warming up again. Should be able to activate test number two in around about five minutes and 15 seconds. It's now clear the only quantifiable test will be travel to the past. The machine is now calibrated to send Schrodinger five minutes into the past, which means that he will now be traveling counterclockwise through the corridor, and when he comes out the other... Holy shit. Holy shit, it worked. This... this is clear proof that it's... Uh, what, I'm, what I'm now looking at is a future version of the same mouse that has successfully traveled five minutes into the past. Schrodinger, meet future you. Fuck up, hit me. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Also, look at look at the little mini corridor. That's so cute. Also, there's a box of Greg there, apparently. What is that? Oh, uh, the words on there. I just can't quite get close enough. Wish I could, like, had a scope a rifle or something. Okay. $12,000 moving bill. He must have hauled a lot more to this place than just some old boxes. Okay, moving bill. Report discreet moving services bill. We're front discreet moving services. No questions asked. You pack, we move. Moving dates, March 1st to March 28th, 1999. Workshop of William Joyce, 821 Industrial Lane, we report to Bradbury Swimming Pool. 261 Bradbury Street, we report. Client's name, William Joyce. Special instructions, extremely delicate boxes. Contents are confidential. Uh, packed boxes not to be inspected. Pick up and drop off only. Shipping 17 truckloads over the course of 17 days. Total cost $12,713. And no change. Okay. You owned this place since 1999? Why didn't you tell me, Will? Rubber swim pool deed, which he just leaves on the desk here. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I put all your paperwork regarding the purchase of the Bradbury swimming pool in this folder. I knew you'd lose track of the documents. Otherwise, I've made sure that the purchase can't be traced back to to funds from your research grant. I don't know what you're up to, and it's not my business to ask, but we've known each other long enough for me to say this. I trust that you know what is best for you, but I can't pretend that I'm not concerned. Your career is showing so much promise, and your recent actions feel like a drastic turn in a direction I can't begin to understand. I kept my pro promise and haven't told Jack or anyone else about this. 
but he's worried about you, even if he doesn't know how to show it. Jack hasn't heard from you in months. He needs you. Your attorney and friend, Allison Cunningham, March 29th, 1999. Huh. Yeah, what we have here? Oh. No wonder you are always coming up with crazy shit. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Devil lettuce. Okay. Oh. oh, hey. I would have missed that if I didn't go in the vision mode. We need to keep our contact limited from this point forward. forward. I'll find I'll you find on the counter missiles completely. Complete. Complete. Now, William, I don't want to alarm you, but you appear to be make it, made out of tetrahedrons. I want to look into that. Wasn't there a thing over here? Maybe? I guess it's over there. Oh well. Oh, there's a little diner. Do, do swimming pools normally have like a cafeteria? Flash diner? I mean, it's not a small one either. Hello, Riverport. Teresa Sedmack here, filling in for Bobby Radford, about to brighten your day with some good news. The victims wounded during the terrorist attack on Riverport University are being treated in the Monarch Solutions Medical Center in downtown Riverport, and the hospital has released a statement saying they are all now stable and out of critical condition. I'm sure they are thankful for all your good thoughts and prayers. As for those who didn't survive the attack, we still don't have a final death toll, but we do know that most of the dead are security personnel from Monarch Solutions, whose quick action saved countless civilian lives at the cost of their own. While Jack Joyce, the terrorist responsible for the carnage, is still at large, authorities are saying that he is believed to not have left Riverport, and thanks to a number of solid leads, his capture is imminent. Uh huh. Three engineers, candy bars of some kind. That, that sounds like licensed music. Don't, don't, don't I have that setting where that does not happen? All right. I guess it's not copyrighted. Okay. Alrighty. Well, if you want me to go there, I'm gonna be a rebel. Actually, does that just wrap around? Huh. Swimmy people. I assume none of these are gonna actually have to do anything to do with, or have anything to do with the story. It's just, uh, well, the story of the of this building, basically. Ah, there you are. Employees only, huh? Okay, how many is that now? Um, diaries and upgrades. Okay, five points. Let's see. You. Uh, no, that might be useful, that might also be useful. Uh, I'll take the time dodge, wow, time dodge upgrade, I think that's what I've been using the most really. Yeah, okay, more three engineers candy bars. I guess I want me to let them in, huh? I guess I could. After I explore a bit more. <laughs> Any work in there? Nope. Working on it. I don't even know I'm here. Okay, I, I imagine we're gonna go through there when they come in anyway. So let them in. Yeah. You gonna unlock this door for us? Nope. Yeah, just hold on. Where's Amy? All right, let's take a look around. Oh yeah, Amy's going to uh, going to uh, keep a lookout. <sighs> nice work. Or not? Oh yeah, Beth said they were going to at least for a moment. Beth, play video. This note. It's directed at me. Very good. July fourth, two thousand and ten. Beth Wilder, I'm addressing this video to you. You 
told me to stay away from my workshop, but I couldn't just leave it there. I went back to get it, and the entire place is a disaster zone. The countermeasure, gone, taken. Oh, shit. What the... Safe, empty. I just need to know you have it, because if it falls into the wrong hands, its power is immeasurable. Our future, our entire lives depend on it. This can't all be for nothing. You know where to find me. Please, hurry. 2010. Holy shit. What was that? He recorded that for me in 2010? What the fuck? He said the countermeasure's gone? It's not good. We need to figure this out. Let's keep looking. Bum bum bum. Plot development. Okay. Let's go this way. No dice? I guess not. Does does it want me to use that? Apparently. Help me push this out of the way. You told me to stay away from I can just like time explode it. Just leave it there. I went back to get it. And the entire place is a disaster zone. The countermeasure. Jack, your brother addressed that video to me. Safe. I've never met him before in my life. Just need to know you have it. Well, it sounded like he thought you had his countermeasure. I wish. But he said it was stolen on July 4th, 2010. Somebody took it. This can't all be for nothing. You know where to find me. <sighs> I'm hoping this place will help us figure out who. That's kind of a weird scene. It bring us really close like that just so we can talk, I guess. Goodies? I'll give you the honor of pressing the button. Oh boy, thank you. You know me too well. Oh, it's a big red button too. It's glorious. Is that? Yeah, I think so. The second time machine. This changes everything. No, it, it just changes the amount of time machines that exist. At one if time. we can get this thing working, then we don't need that countermeasure. We can change everything. What if we stop the fracture from ever happening in the first place? We can go back to yesterday, undo everything in the past before it happens. Nobody dies. Paul doesn't go through the machine. Monarch never exists. I mean, the fracture never occurs. Jack, wait. Let's think this through. That's not how it... I can go into the machine like Paul did at the university. I help them set it up. Then we activate the core, put the corridor in place, and set the date. I can do it, Beth. I'm not so sure we can do this without the countermeasure. But you're right. We'll need the machine. Right. Let's start with the core. Um... Explanation? Anybody? I saw some kind of visions of this machine in his workshop. You must have hit it here. Feel free to fill me in. Anytime now. Okay, core controls. Where are they? I don't know. There's lots of readables around here. Also, somebody must have been blowing up this beach ball because they gradually lose uh, air over time. And this place looks like it's been abandoned for quite some time. You said Will built a countermeasure. What makes you so sure this isn't it? The time machine? He said the countermeasure was stolen. But the machine is still here. Well, we've seen what the countermeasure looks like. It looks portable. Alrighty. Okay. Gotta figure out where to start. Where are the core controls? Uh, probably this. There's core. There's wires going to it. It says input. Okay. Will received a massive research grant in 1997. He'd successfully built the time machine by 1999. But the results scared him. 
He never told a soul. Okay. Physicist on the Rise article. Uh, report Physicist on the Rise, June 4th, 1997. Dr. Joyce and Dr. Mayer became household names early this year when their paper on the proposed existence of a chronon field became one of the most hotly debated theories in the quantum physics community since the Higgs boson. William Joyce, born and raised in Riverport, wasn't satisfied Anybody with simply... this map? It looks like he labeled where everything is. I, I, I just did. I wasn't satisfied with simply, simply being a part of the discussion and decided to actively research for proof. This proposed research project led him to obtaining the highly prestigious Harold Steinberg Fund with an estimated value of $15,000. Dr. William Joyce is officially the youngest recipient of the Harold Steinberg Research Grant to date. While the specifics of his research proposal remains confidential, it is likely that Joyce aims to demonstrate clear proof of the so-called Meyer-Joyce field, as well as the potential applications for the manipulation of this field. A research timeline has been established with milestones that point to early 1999, as a record from this research will be ready for public unveiling. We will continue to follow William Joyce's story as part of a Riverport Rising series. Yeah, some of these computers look pretty old. Alrighty. Oh. Well, this... You might want to stop talking for a bit so I can go and read and listen to things that are hey, new. Andy. What is this? I don't think you'd believe me. Uh, in the past two hours, I've learned that Monarch is a secret paramilitary. It's a time machine. Okay. I'll compartmentalize that with everything else that shouldn't make sense. We should help Jared. Beth. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do I go up there? Oh, there's a big thing over there. Can I get up there? Oh, I can't even jump. Okay. I mean, like, Monarch being a paramilitary or having a their own paramilitary aspect to it, it's not that mind-blowing, considering she's seen Jack, you know, manipulate time right in front of her. You think that would be more of a weird thing to see? But hey. Emily and Joyce, uh, regarding where are you, to Beth Wilder. Guy looks uh, fantastic in that picture. Yes. Uh, Beth, the time has arrived. It's here. Everything you warned me about is about to come to fruition. Please give me a sign that you're still out there. Put my mind at ease. Tell me you have the countermeasure. I'm losing my mind over here. I spent years trying to convince myself that you were wrong all this time, and that I built the countermeasure for nothing. I tried to move on, pick up the pieces, but now I've seen the proof. Paul Serene brought me in to advise on an experiment at the university. They've built it. They've built another time machine, almost an exact replica of my own design. Both key flaws in the calculations. Just like you said, if they activate this machine, then the fracture will occur. How is this possible? How have they followed my design so closely? Someone's been watching me all this time, haven't they? Somebody is orchestrating this, all of it. I'm being followed. At first I thought it was paranoia, but it's true. A man has been watching my every move. I secretly took his photo, ran a search. His name is Liam Burke. He works for a security division of Monarch Solutions. I first noticed it weeks ago, but this could have been going on for years. What does he want? What does he know? How is he connected to this? I need answers. I don't know who I can trust anymore. I don't know who else is involved, what they want, and why. I need to hear from you. I need to know that I'm not alone in all this. If what you told me is true, then the onset of the fracture may be inevitable, but I can't simply stand by and allow it to happen. Not until I know the countermeasure is safe. Okay. To Beth from William. October 4th, 2016. Where are you? I've seen it. The cause of the fracture exists. It's here. Are you still out there? Okay. And the reply. I've given up hope that you're still listening. I'm not sure why you're writing this. Anybody get some closure? You've changed the course of my life when you entered it. I spent over a decade devoted to your cause. I sacrificed every relationship I had, pushed away someone I love, all in the name of a lie. There is no threat coming. There never was. I have to force myself to believe this. It's the only way to move on. It's the only way to pick up the pieces and start over. This is goodbye. Oh, one second. I need to wet my whistle here. Okay, to Beth Wilder from William Joyce. It has been a year. I still haven't heard anything. You know where to find me. Hello? 
number you gave me is now disconnected. Where are you? Okay. I can't sleep. Please call me. Okay, this is... Yeah, this is Will. Over and over again. Fuck, call me. Email me. Something. I'm freaking out. I'm still trying to call you. Where are you? Have you taken it? It's not safe in the open. You don't understand the power of this device. I dialed the number you gave me in case of emergencies. You aren't answering. What is going on? It's gone. The countermeasure is gone. What happened? Call me immediately. Okay. And another diagram. That's a countermeasure, yeah. Pretty neat looking. It's a pretty cool looking for uh for MacGuffin, you know. Okay. Oh. It's over there. Are you an objective? Oh, more ready things. Okay, time machine schematics. Alright. Cool. Stop. Check area clear. Okay. I assume those are like the buttons that we've pressed before uh the the first episode of this. So we're probably gonna have to get Amy and Beth. No, nothing I can make sense of. Parents killed in the Riverport car, car crash article. December 22nd, 1999. Parents killed in Bradbury car crash. Okay, we're in Bradbury. Holiday cheers and short supply in the Riverport community of Bradbury after a tragic car crash claimed the lives of a married couple, Anthony and Catherine Joyce. Okay. The accident took place within walking distance of the family's front door on Princeton Street in the early afternoon. Catherine Joyce, who was driving, lost control of their car after a collision with another vehicle and crashed into a utility pole. The other car left the scene of the accident. Uh, the Joyce's were both well known in the Bradbury area, area as prominent members of the community. Last year, they were recognized by the mayor for their charity efforts, particularly in Riverport Multiple Sclerosis Walk. They organized every year since 1993. The couple, couple left behind two children, the promising young physicist Dr. William Joyce and Jack Joyce, still under age. Okay. Candlelight vigil will be held for Anthony and Catherine on Sunday to unite the grieving family, friends, and the community during this tragic time. Alrighty. Am I gonna get all the narrative objects this level? Ah, there you are. Yoink. I'll take that. I feel like this is gonna be a short level. Wonder if I missed anything. doing in there. Okay, that's where it wants me to go, so... Oh. It says the time machine core needs to be reset. Great. What the hell does it look like? A core. Round thing in the middle. I think. Okay. Oh, I see you over there. Thought you could escape, did you? Uh... Oh, there we go. Maybe? I, I apparently can't jump down that. <laughs> but I want to get over there. Am I really going to have to go all the way around? That's what it looks like. Or, yeah, I can go this way too. And that way it works too. It would let me sprint. That'd be real handy. Hi there. <laughs> A Civilian's Guide to Time Travel. Cliche work entitled by William Joyce. Rough Ideas, February 28th, 1999. Opening statements. Open with a zinger. Schrodinger cat joke. Note. Unappropriate accompanying cat photo. Note. No cat photo. They clearly don't have the internet. Uh, no science explained here. Marketing bullshit. Time machine equals works. Implications equal limitless. Give me your money spiel. Build up existence of time machine. Uh, content here dependent on findings from first human tests later tonight. Findings, facts, dumbed down for the mouth breathers who inevit inevitably want to invest. Purpose of guide to explain to mouth breathers how the machine works and why. Note, proofread and delete all mouth breather references. <laughs> time machine overview. 
Our research started include uh, gratuities for research grant, sucking ass, community investors. Uh, note, also thank Jack for his patience. Now that this is over, I promise to be there for him. Note, too personal. Uh, basic overview of time machine, parts, quantum particles. Nobody will give a shit about this or understand it. Skip it. How time travel works. Simplest terms. Subject activates time machine. Step one core. Step two the corridor. Subject sets the desired time travel date. Subject enters the corridor. Compare corridor to donut in shape to explain. Note, add joke. You don't want to eat this donut or your body will suffer t terminal cr chronon saturation. Leading to your slow but inevitable death. How do they, how do they know that if they haven't even done any any uh, human tests? Well, I suppose they could they could tell from animal tests. Uh, cut joke, disturbing. Subject walks around the corridor. Walking clockwise around the corridor equals travel to the future. Walking counterclockwise around the corridor equals travel to the past. Clock-like design. Subject arrives at new time or uh, new time and future or past. Uh, Space-time continuum. Travel across space. Time travel is not a portal. Special destination will not always be the same as the entry point. Time travel is tied to a rotating black hole core. Uh, note, explain the core first. Note, explain it. Just compare the core to a car engine. Note, look up info on car engines. A uh, subject will arrive in future past at the location where the time machine and core were located at that time. You cannot travel to a time when time machine and core were not active. Do not travel to a time before the core was first activated. Okay, that's interesting. That sounds important. Huh. But hypothetically, if the two, the two times that you were traveling between uh, use the same core, and the core weren't in the same place, you'd also travel, you'd change location as you time traveled as well. This is my understanding of it. Uh, examples of how time travel works. In 1999, a time machine core is first activated. The time machine is located on an island. In 2000, the same time machine, with the same core, is moved to a circus tent. Teddy enters time machine in 1999 and travels to 2000. He exits the time machine and is in a circuit tent. Note uses better examples, no circus tent. Teddy cannot travel to a time before 1999 because the core was not active. Will bang my goddamn head against the wall every time somebody uses the example of not being able to go back and kill Hitler to try to sound f clever slash funny. Note a dinosaur joke though. <laughs> Explain you can't go back and see dinosaurs. Fucking sucks. Yeah, a little bit. Close loops in theory all actions resulting from time travel equals already accounted for. Should not be able to change the past. Any attempt to change things was always part of the chain of events in the first place. Already happened, explained Norikov's self-consistency principle, until heads go pop. Uh, metaphor to explain closed loops. Time is an egg. You can move the egg, but no matter where you move it, the same chicken will hatch. Oh. Well, the egg is fucked now, isn't it? That's what William was saying. No terrible example, plus you could just eat the fucking egg. An egg is sitting on the table, you leave the room, come back, and the egg is broken on the floor. You aren't sure how this happened, but it saddens you. The egg was important to you because, in certain reason, that makes sense here later. You travel to the past to prevent the egg from breaking. When you arrive at the past, you rush over to the table, accidentally bump it. The egg falls and breaks. You cause the very thing you tried to prevent. Close loops. Why the hell do all my examples end up being about eggs? Note, replace egg with something else. You know, I, I do enjoy some of the writing in this game. Uh, subst substantially cheesy. Especially William's stuff. Okay. I guess we should probably do what it wants me to do, right? She has okay, there's no more uh, uh, gathering points, I think. Uh huh. Okay, so we gotta reset the core. Which means I probably have to go down there. Why did I come up here? I know why, because I'm bad. <laughs> you just gonna chill there? Like, you know this is a time machine. You're not, like, worried about, like, radiation and shit like that. It's like, no, I'm just gonna hang here. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna have a good time. Okay. Hey, it looks like I can reset the core from here. Are you sure you know what you're doing there? No clue. But I did help Paul set up the machine at the university. 
which then caused the fracture. Look, Will knew the calculations were wrong. I'm hoping that means he knew what he was doing here. This is what Will is leading us to. We have to test it. The core. That's what we set up first. Alrighty. This could actually be the key to finding the countermeasure. We'll see. It's still resetting. You done resetting it? The core is reset. We need to activate it from the control booth. The controls are up here, according to the monitor. Uh huh. They're very generous with the. Uh, here goes nothing. Instructions. Okay. We remember this. I mean, I remember it. I don't know if you do. What was that? You just generate a black it's hole. Fine. It's fine. It worked. <laughs> it actually worked. Let's go okay. lick it. We activate the corridor next. Okay, there is no way that thing should be exposed like that. Yeah, that's how I feel. That's quite how I feel. You know, it's a micro black hole, but it's still a black hole. And it must have stopped it from getting bigger. Don't they naturally get bigger as they pull in things? The corridor. It's key activated. Will's key. Open a door and this? That'd be a little silly, wouldn't it? Thank God. Um, is that supposed to do that? Back? Yeah. It's beautiful. Key to a time machine and he left it in a trunk of his goddamn car. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's my brother in a nutshell. Where's your nutshell and a brother? That didn't sound good. A little bit. Fuck. Let's just hope it still works. Hi. Do you have something to say? This is gonna work. It has to. You guys aren't actually planning to use this machine. A little bit. Are you? So I guess you're not at all concerned that one guy jerry rigged this entire thing together? Because I think I literally see duct tape. Okay, no, this is a great idea. Yeah, no way that this is gonna backfire. Well, you're welcome to leave. I mean, I would. I honestly wouldn't blame you. You know, honestly, the, the moment that, that the word core is mentioned, relative to science, this probably gonna leave the area. Input. I'm guessing this is it over here. Thank you, Amy. Okay, it's perfect. It's even unlocked. Not a friendly invitation. No, 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 no. What? God damn it. I don't know. So close. I'm gonna try it again. Yeah, like hell you are. You saw what happened. Something's wrong with the machine. Well, we don't know that. You're not trained for this. Anything you do is gonna make it worse. We you can't know I'm right. Stop trying. You lost people. You're angry. I get it. But this is bigger than us. We can't fix the machine. But I might know somebody who can. Sophia Amaral. Uh-huh. The monarch scientist. I saw her video near Ground Zero. Serene's had a Cronin research. She'll be at the Monarch Gala tonight, but security's airtight. She'll be nearly impossible to get to. Unless I have an invite. Paul told me he expected me to meet him at that party. Something tells me that was not a friendly invitation. Jack, no. <laughs> that cut. End of Act Two. Yes. That that happened. Uh huh. <laughs> Now, um, I know we're only on 40 minutes here in this episode, but I think that's a good time to, to wrap it up.
So, uh, actually, no. I don't know. I can just, I can continue here later. Okay. Yeah. We're going to wrap it up here. So if you like this episode, want to give it a like, a comment, or constructive criticism. And if you want more like this, why not subscribe? Either way, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed yourself, and I hope you'll join me next time. Stay spicy.